My senses have been stripped My hands can't feel to grip My toes to dog to step With only for my foot hills to be warm I'm ready to go anywhere I'm ready for to fade Unto my home to dance and spell my way I promise to go on the rail me what you want to do I think I could stay with you For a while, maybe longer if I do Don't you think the time is right for us to find? All the things we thought were proper could be right in time. Can't you see which way we should turn together or alone? I can never see what's right or what is wrong. Will it take too long to see? Hey, me. What you want to do I think I could stay with you For a while Maybe longer if I do I think I could stay with you for a while, maybe longer if I do. Now it's come to what you want, you've had your way. All the things you thought were bad and gray, and you can't you see. I don't know if it's you or if it's me If it's one of us, I'm sure we both will see Oh, hey me, what you want to do? I think I could stay with you for a while, maybe longer if I do I think I could stay with you for a while, maybe longer if I do. Falling and I'm out of love with you. Falling and I'm out of love with you. Something I don't want to do. Cause you ain't going nowhere Ooh, we 
who ride behind Cause one of those days my bride's gonna come Oh Lord, we're gonna fly down in the easy chair Find me a gun, a flute that shoots Tailgates and substitutes Stop yourself to a tree with roots Cause you ain't going nowhere We'll ride behind Tomorrow's the day when the ride's gonna come Oh Lord, when are we gonna fly Down in the easy chair We got a tambourine something? The tambourine lead My king is calm he could not keep all his kings supplied with sheep. We're gonna climb the mountain no matter how steep until we get up to it. It's the mayor! Ooh, we ride behind. Tomorrow's the day when the ride's gonna come. Oh Lord, we're gonna fly down in the easy chair. Ooh, we ride behind. Tomorrow's the day my bride's gonna come Oh Lord, we're gonna fly down in the easy chair Bravo! <laughs> 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 It doesn't blink, I don't think. Does it? There's no warning light. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, David. You know, I think Livermore is a wonderful place to live for a lot of reasons, and a lot of it is for the support that the community gives um, the people that are that live here. And one of the leading organizations, I think, that um, that really plays a critical role in the success and vibrancy of the city is Rotary. You know, more than a... I guess I'm kind of preaching to the choir, but that was kind of intended that way, right? But the, uh, the, the combination of these two clubs donates uh, more than $100,000 a year back to the community. And if you think about that, they've been doing that for more than 25 years. That's a lot of money coming to the community each and every year. This particular structure is incremental to all of that. It was the efforts of a lot of people, a lot of them that are out in the audience, but really as a result of hard work by the people that built it. I can't name them all, but I can recognize Steve Neff. I can recognize Dennis Gams. Bravo, bravo. They had the vision and they executed it. I, I tell Dennis he's like a bulldog. He grabs a hold of a bone and he just won't let it go. And so I think hats off to them. Hats off to each and every one who was out here working on this structure. I know JR's company played a big role in it. And I know there's lots of other people that dedicated their time, their resources, um, and, and efforts. You know, all this takes place because underneath it all, we had some assurances of some funding that the foundation would come forward with. And I stepped forward and I said, sure, I'll take charge of that. And I promptly was able to recruit Kathy Coyle. <laughs> so I'd like Kathy to come up. I'd like to recognize her efforts in the fundraising. You're right here. Oh, fantastic. But Kathy has done more than just this bandstand this year. She has um, headed up our Donor Perfect program, which is a fundraising effort to continue to accelerate the the role that the foundation plays and the role that the two clubs play in the, in, the, uh, in the community. But it is my pleasure to present Kathy with this plaque, recognizing her extraordinary efforts in support of the Rotarian Foundation of Livermore. Please give Kathy Coyle a round of applause. I thought I might surprise you with that.
We're so lucky today to have um, our mayor, John Marchand. John, would you like to come up and say a few words? Kind of thought you would. Hello, John. We only have 20 minutes, John. <laughs> Only 20 minutes? I had somebody tell me I couldn't tell anybody my name in 20 minutes. Sure, you're fine, Mike. Well, this is a great day today. This is, uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Uh, this is, uh, we've been watching the uh, this coming out of the ground, uh, and I've got my cupola on top. So yes, thank you very much. That's, that's, you know, when we do this, I want that on top. So this, this, is, uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful work that the, the folks have put together here and as I look out into the uh, the crowd today I uh, see a lot of familiar faces and, and we all know that that the 80 percent of the work is done by 20 percent of the people and it's amazing how many times that 20 percent are Rotarians and I just want to thank all the folks from Rotary that do so much for this community uh, because this this really is why Livermore is such a remarkable community uh, because we got yeah, we did a citizen survey a while back, and some of you might have heard me say this, but in a citizen survey, 93% of the people said that Livermore was a great place to live and raise a family. And uh, so when we did the survey this year, I was a little worried because 93% is a, is a good number, and usually, you know, where are you going to go from there? When we did the citizen survey this year, 96% of the people said that Livermore is a great place to live. Bravo. But there was a statistic in there that I thought was even more important, and that was that 51% of the people that responded, over half of the people in Livermore, give their time back to the community. Now, we can all write a check, and uh, you can always make more money, but you can't make more time. So people are giving the most valuable thing that they have, their time, back to this community and that's why this is such a remarkable community and a lot of that that time you, you come by here Saturdays Sundays evenings and people are working on this because they're giving their time back to the community to keep Livermore a great place to live to work and to raise a family and to all the Rotarians and the Rotary Foundation thank you very much for your commitment to our community and making it the great place that it is. Thank you very much. Well, that's a hard act to follow, but I, as you know, I've heard I'm Kathy Coyle, and I am here to thank all of our fabulous donors because without all the donors I wouldn't have done my job very well so I am I'm so pleased that David asked me to help him with this um, it was a lot of work but it was the most fun job I've had in a very very long time I made a lot of new friends I reconnected with old friends and, and many of them are here today. I want to let you know that uh, Dave actually has our prototype leaf for those of you who have never seen it. So I really want you to see the leaf, what it's gonna look like. Um, we sold 70 of those leaves oh, wow. and you're the ones who bought them. Bravo. So thankful to, for that. Bravo. We had some medium sized leaves. We have larger leaves. It is just, wonderful the support that we got from the community to build this fabulous facility and when I say thank you to people I say this will be an enduring and endearing fixture in our community for many years to come and it was a pleasure to be involved in it so about the leaves I just want to let you know that you will all be receiving a proof so you can make sure it's right and then we are scheduled to be delivered sometime in January then we are going to invite you to actually look at your own leaf and hold it in your hands so you can do a photo op with it. I think that's a good idea, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Um, and then I also have here a drawing of what the leaves are gonna look like on the wall. So if you'd like to see that, I'm happy to show you that. I'd also really like to thank Gretchen Rutherford for <laughs> taking hey, care of all Gretchen. of the thank you letters. She's been an enormous help to me for that. Um, 
And the dedication party, as I understand, is April 14th. Is that correct? So I'll see you all back then, and thank you again. Thank you, Kathy. Dennis, would you like to come up? Yeah. And then we'll have Steve come up after okay. you the, for the cleanup here. I'd like to uh, introduce Dennis Gams, who is uh, one of the brains of putting this all together in time and effort, so we do appreciate it. Dennis? Uh, thank you, Dick. Thank you, Dick. I don't know about brains. Um, in fact, if, if we had listed doing speeches as one of the purposes for this bandstand when we're going through the approval stage. I'm not sure I'd be here now. But anyway, I thank you for coming. And uh, I am amazed uh, to go back to the donors that people would donate $1,000 for one of those bronze leaves without actually knowing exactly what it's going to look like and where it's going to be put. So um, thank you very much. So I will give you just a slice of the background on how we got into this. So you, the bandstand was needed as a music venue for the farmers market and we talked to, and we talked is that okay and when we talked to the uh, downtown association Rochelle Snedeker says this was in the fall of 2011 and she says you can build it in the spring well I thought she was crazy I thought it would take at least two years well one of the reasons we're here today. It took four years, and after two years, I think that uh, we knew everybody would think Steve and I were crazy because nothing was happening, and just so you wouldn't know for sure we were crazy, we really had to finish this. But I would say that um, we really need to recognize Steve Neff for the beautiful design. What we've got is something that's got modern materials, it's going to last for a hundred years, but it looks like something from a hundred years ago. So I'd give him a hand. And, and, and it was easy to know he was going to be the perfect partner for this. He has to look at this all week long, so we knew we were going to have a great design. He, he works right across there for anybody who doesn't know that. In any case, um, you know, um, as part of the people that made this happen, uh, we don't want to miss the contractors who worked on this. Um, we don't have the exact numbers, but I would say we're somewhere in the, maybe a third of that. Their work was donated. Uh, some of this was done at cost. Some of it they give a discount on. Some of it was done free. It was amazing to see the community step forward and want to work on this. They did a great job in, in, in the craftsmanship. They were fun to work with. And then there was, when every time we were here, Everybody that walked by, almost everybody, it seemed like everybody, complimented us on working on this. You really felt like you were part of the community uh, in doing this, and everybody was looking at this as, as a part of their own project, I think. In any case, the, the, the last thing I want to say is that this was really possible by both of the Rotary Clubs, the Morning Club, the Noon Club, and the Foundation coming together. And when you get those three organizations working together, this is what we can do. Thank you. Yeah, Dave Bedford said he couldn't name everybody that's worked on this, but I can. <laughs> uh, but I'm not going to. There's just too many, quite honestly. Um, I wanted to point out the electrical box over here because part of this project was that we upgraded the electrical service to that building that only had 100 amps. Uh, from its original construction 100 or so years ago. They now have 200 amps and we've got 40 amps here. And uh, that work was done by Design Electric. Uh, Kieran Wright was a surveyor and Cal Water provided electricians and grading. And uh, so I just wanted to name a few of these names. Um, the first thing that we needed to do to build this bandstand was dig some holes. And I called up a friend of mine, Bill Barnett, because I knew he had a auger. And uh, he came out here to look at the project and just said, nah, I'm going to build the whole foundation. I, you know. so he just took it over, and he was so dependable, always showed up, and so all this concrete work is uh, Bill Barnett. Um, Way to go, Bill. He's not here today. He was going to run, but uh, had to pour concrete. That's what he does. So the, the biggest challenge here was the steel. 
Um, we had gotten an estimate of $17,000 for the steel, and three years later when we were ready to build, it was $35,000. And we shopped it, and we found Northern Structural out of the uh, Castro Valley area, or San Leandro, uh, that got it done for, I think it was 24000 and change. So that was a, a big savings. Um, then JR had to paint it, so it, this has got automotive paint on it from uh, Tri-Valley Auto Body. Thank you, JR. Thank you, JR. Um, while we were waiting for the steel and waiting for the steel to be painted, I want to give special recognition to Jim Doggett, who took all this heavy timber, which was actually donated by Country Builders, and uh, he cut it in his shop. And when we brought it out here in a trailer and we assembled it, it was just like a big puzzle and all fit. It was, it was truly amazing. And uh, Arnie Kirkwood was a big part of that. Oh, Arnie's here somewhere. Um, he helped Jim Bunch. Um, and there were just certain people in the club that I do want to mention that you could just always count on. Guys like Don Wentz, Pat Coyle, Niall Rungi, Fred Quarterman, TJ Gilmartin, just, you know, anytime we had a work party, those guys were the guys showing up. There were lots of other people that showed up too, but, but I can't name them all. Then we, when we got ready for some framing to go on, we wanted to get professionals in here. Um, talked to several framers and they all kind of said they'd do it. But uh, Ken Fagiano was the one that really came through with his crew. He had help from uh, Kevin Kenny, Tony Scafuri, Devon Allred, Bill Duterry, Tom Stayert. Uh, all contributed to the framing and the lumber here, um, but, but primarily it was uh, Ken Fagiano construction. Then we had uh, Citadel roofing put on the shingles. Um, Adams Pool Service did the brick that's like coping around a swimming pool. Uh, Signal Heating and Air did sheet metal work. Oliver De Silva, Golden State Stucco. Uh, RC Ready Mix donated concrete. Lowe's donated materials. Simpson Strong Tide donated. Sonol Aggregates and many, many others. But uh, it's been a fantastic project to get to know all these people and the, the level of cooperation and support has been wonderful and I thank you guys for that. Thank you. Thank you. JR, you'd like to come up and say a word or two since I embarrassed you? <laughs> Just two words, JR. Keep it within 20 minutes, okay? Who they have to work in this? Okay, so um, last night we were over here and I, I was standing right about over there taking a look at this uh, structure here and it was dark, the light was on. And it just came over me and how beautiful this turned out. And it made me really proud to be part of Livermore and part of the Rotary Club and proud of everybody in Rotary. Both both clubs come together like this. I, I've, I've said it before that we're all, all Rotary. We just happen to meet at different times of the day. One meets in the morning, we meet at lunch, but together, Something like this is, is just an example of what we can accomplish. It wasn't that long ago I saw the plans sitting in front of the, of the meeting and to see it to go from plans to this, it's amazing. And I just wanna thank everybody who had a hand in this, everybody that uh, uh, put their sweat into this and uh, their money. And uh, I also wanna thank everybody for allowing me to be a part of this uh, project and to be part of Livermore. It, it's just been an honor. And uh, once again, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of all the members, both clubs, and everybody who had a hand in this. And thank you. Thank you, JR. And uh, to wrap it up, if Millie Seibel is, is hiding, uh, here she comes in her Wonder Woman outfit. She's going to be appearing Monday night at the show there, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ellie, you can wrap it up. Okay. Hey, thanks everybody for coming. This is a great venue. Yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, right. You realize that we are the first ones to use this in a 
a, a celebration. We had Tim Berry out here and Michael Ferrucci and they just were rocking it out to all two people that were in the audience. And it was great that they stayed and they lasted because the crowds came when they heard the music. But I just wanted to say again, express my thank yous to um, everybody who helped on this and to let you know that this is just the first of many occasions. And the reason I'm dressed like this is because we had a fun run this morning and I didn't bring a change of clothes. So, uh, so I'm kind of stuck like this. But stick around, there's lemonade, water, and a few cookies left. And we're gonna celebrate, we're gonna have um, Steve McDowell is here with his band and they're gonna play for a little while longer. So we have some time where we can just sit and visit and have some fun. So thank you all for coming. And if you notice on the stairs, I don't know if anybody told you, but it says Rotary Bandstand on there. So this is forever a Rotary Bandstand that will be dedicated to the city in April. So again, thank you everybody for making this happen and uh, let's have some fun. Yeah.